Howdy folks, AJ coming at you again, your resident vintage gamer. And today is a good day. I'm excited. Today I got my issue number four of Gygax magazine in the mail. And look at this beauty. Let's see if we can do it without the glare here can here. Um, for those of you that do not recognize the artwork, it is uh, by a guy named uh, Den Bove. I think I'm pronouncing his name uh, correctly. I hope so. Uh, and he had done, back in the day when Dragon Magazine was around, he did a series of four of these chessboard uh, covers, uh, and the um, it tells you on in here. Uh, it tells you what the uh, I think it was uh, Dragon Magazine's issues number 83, 86, 89, and 118 were the other four. And now that Gygax Magazine is back, or I should say, is here uh, as a throwback to Dragon Magazine. He did another cover, so this would be the fifth. Um, so, if you are a collector and you want to check your collection to see if you have those covers, you could have a whole set. That's what I'll be doing after I'm done with this video. I'll be pulling out all my boxes and going through and seeing. I just I have no idea if I have all of them. Sure would be nice if I did. So, uh, the first thing I wanted to say about this issue is, um, and I don't know if I can take any credit for it or not. But in issue number three, when issue number three came out, I did a review uh, of that and loved the issue, loved the hobby shop dungeon that was in it, loved everything about it. There was a Metamorphosis Alpha, um, you know, piece of content in there. Um, there was the hobby shop dungeon. All everything was fantastic. The only the only comment that I had of any negative negative at all was that the packaging for issue number three was different it was not the uh, protective packaging that the first two issues had come in it was just a simple um, flimsy plastic uh, cover on the magazine and as a result I got a little damage on my on issue number three and I mentioned that on my video and uh, the folks at Gygax magazine uh, sent me a message saying that, you know, um, they apologized for it and so forth. And here today, I get issue number four, and it is in a nice, sturdy, thick con container, shipping, shipping package. Um, so, and of course, as a result, and then it was wrapped in plastic. The magazine itself was wrapped in, uh, in shrink wrap. So, um, you had this nice sturdy stuff and then you had the plastic and as a result this issue is not damaged it's pristine so um, I like I said I don't know if I can take any credit for it I don't know if there were others in addition to me that made a comment about the packaging uh, but either way um, being a, a quality organization that they have they sure have every appearance of being a quality organization because uh, they rectified the issue. And uh, to me, as a consumer, that's, uh, that's epic. When, you know, um, everybody has, you know, problems once in a while, but if the provider, if the supplier, whoever, the, uh, if they go out of their way to make things right, that's fantastic. That's, that's the way all companies should run. They don't necessarily all do that, but in this case, it worked out. So if you are a collector and you're thinking about subscribing, uh, if they continue to ship it in this, I think we're all in good shape. So uh, now uh, to talk about the content um, of this one. Uh, so of course you have the artwork and everything, and then uh, inside the I'm not going to go through everything, but uh, the the 
the highlight for me is that there is a brand new top secret uh, is the name of the role playing game for those who don't know it top secret role playing game uh, which was the first espionage uh, role playing game and it was created by the administrator himself Merle Rasmussen in uh, 1980 and this one has a new, they don't call them modules for top secret, they call them operations. And this one has a new operation in it, Operation Rendezvous Oasis. And what to me is amazing is that it is by Merle Rasmussen, the man himself. So you have the gentleman who wrote the first one, Operation Spreckenhall Testel, I believe that's the correct way to say that, or code name Pisces. Uh, this was Administrator File 001 over here. And uh, this is how they all had administrator file numbers and they had operations and code names and all that, all the, the following modules that would come out or operations that would come out. And this one uh, is no different. This one, uh, they have uh, Operation Rendezvous Oasis and codename Scorpion Sting. So there you go. And it's, of course, by the master himself. And there's a wonderful full color, if I can do it here, there's a full color handout that goes with it. So there you go. Um, to me, that is the highlight of this issue. There are many um, excellent uh, columns in here, and uh, I'll just, you know, a um, couple of them here. Men and Monsters of Polynesia, uh, The Necromancer's Cookbook, uh, which is Breathing New Life into Skeletons and Zombies. Um, there's an article on the gin, um, and uh, so forth and so on. So, excellent, excellent issue, starting with... The the cover art through the special attraction of the top secret uh, operation and uh, and all the other content and the packaging stellar once again so um, I think and, and if you if you guys look back you guys can find in my stuff you can find my other reviews for the previous issues if you're interested in seeing those um, I also have done a video about specifically about espionage role-playing games. Uh, I covered um, Top Secret and I covered uh, James Bond 007. I covered both of those. Um, so yeah, I, that one I'll probably put a link in the description below in, in case you guys want to check that one out. So um, Gygax Magazine. Gygax Magazine. Well done. And we'll catch you guys on the flip side.